In this short video, you will learn how scaffolding assignments and course content can help work towards the UDL principle of action and expression. In UDL, providing students with multiple means of action and expression allows for students to get the most out of their learning experiences. Within this principle, the guidelines include that instructors build fluencies in a topic or in content with graduated levels of support, guide students in appropriate goal setting for a project or assignment, including estimating effort, resources, and difficulty, and support students' ability to strategically plan and develop by breaking long-term goals into reachable short-term objectives. The process of scaffolding provides the structures needed to help fulfill these and other checkpoints within action and expression. In construction, scaffolding provides a structure for building something up. In instruction, scaffolding provides a structure for students to reach learning goals as they gain mastery in a new skill or discipline. Another way to define scaffolding in the context of instruction is structuring assignments and course materials in a systematic way to support your learning objectives and make the goals and process transparent to students. As this definition illustrates, there are several benefits to using scaffolding to teach new concepts or skills. Scaffolding allows you to work towards the learning objectives you set out for the course while clarifying the process to students. Being transparent with why an assignment or activity is important and how students can be successful with it makes for better learning and greater motivation on their part. Some examples for scaffolding in courses include you, the instructor, modeling the behavior you want to see from students on an assignment, summarizing between old and new concepts or ideas, providing checklists with exact steps to complete a task or assignment, using graphic organizers to illustrate concepts and connections between them, previewing new vocabulary, like through a glossary, before diving into a new idea. Take a minute to pause and reflect. What types of scaffolding do you already do in your courses? After reflection, you could probably think of several ways you already incorporate scaffolding methods into your course. There are a couple of approaches to scaffolding that can help students complete assignments and have positive learning experiences. Process-oriented scaffolding takes a complex assignment and breaks it down to its component parts. Some of you may already be doing something along these lines. If you assign an annotated bibliography, an outline, or first draft before the final paper, you have engaged in some process scaffolding. This type of scaffolding allows you to provide formative feedback to help students master each step before proceeding further. It also helps students start out early on the assignment, keeping them on track. For faculty, this is the most intuitive form of scaffolding that helps students see the steps of doing research, but gives them the short-term objectives to reach that long-term goal. Critical thinking scaffolding begins with activities or tasks that require lower order thinking skills. So the bottom three levels of Bloom's taxonomy, remembering, understanding, and applying, and builds up to more complex assignments. This approach lends itself to incorporating more writing into a course through low stakes writing or writing to learn assignments. These writing components can be for a grade or not, depending on your preference, but help students process course materials. Some examples of low stakes writing include a learning journal where students can reflect on the learning process throughout the course, a one-minute paper, which is a very short essay done in class with a very clear question to have students think through what they have learned in a session. A concept map to help students think of keywords and themes for a specific assignment or for the class in general. A reflection paper, which gives students an opportunity to see patterns in the material they learned, but it is important to provide them with a clear prompt. A statement of confusion, which can be done at the end of a class session or unit to see what might still be unclear to students. With these approaches in mind, pause and reflect about the ways you could more intentionally incorporate scaffolding into your course content and assignments. Not only will this support students as they master subject-specific content, it will allow you to work in multiple means of action and expression for your students. 
If you have any questions about scaffolding, feel free to reach out to us at SEAT.